we're gonna start covering ReZero cut content from the Witch Cult translation, which is a pretty reliable source of ReZero web novel content. This is gonna go through each episode during the seasons and cover, you know, important shit. So here's the rule set, right? Ranking how important the information scene is. So number one is not really important. Relatively important. Three, four, mandatory, right? So these are the super important shit, but hey, we're gonna cover this slowly. I want to be aware of everything that's happening in the anime that the, you know, the web novel's cutting out, or else I won't be able to really fully theorize and stuff like that, but here we go. Season 1, Episode 7. Shadow Garden Scene 1, relatively important. After jumping off the cliff and dying, before respawning, Subaru finds himself in a dark ethereal realm. So this is the one where... Episode 7? That's the one where, you know... Rem tortures, but Subaru also, you know, figures out his resolve through Biaku and runs off, right? In which a humanoid shadow appears to him and someone voices the words, I cannot meet you. Not yet. It's gotta be Satala, right? This gotta be Satala. But before responding, so after he died, he goes into a different realm. So this is kind of important, right? So every time he dies, he regresses. But it seems like his soul is in some sort of different realm. Dark ethereal realm. Similar to what Echidna is doing right now? Probably not. But those are just souls in a different realm. But when he dies, sometimes he can go into the dark ethereal realm where Satala is, I guess, and not yet. Why can Satala not see him not yet? Because if we see her right now, her face and body is kind of mangled. But... If she takes over Amelia's beautiful body, then it's like... It basically, Satala doesn't have makeup on right now. And she doesn't want to see Subaru just yet. But when the time comes, when she has an actual vessel, then she feels oh, it's okay. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but she's not ready yet, guys. Episode 11. Shadow Garden Scene 2. Relatively important. After being knocked unconscious, after Roswell appears to save the day by burning the witch beast, right? To the Ul Goa. Witch beast, huh? Not witch fiends. There's a lot of different translations, right? Mob beasts, witch beasts, witch fiends. Subaru finds himself in the dark ethereal realm yet again. Oh! In which the shadow, now in the shape of a woman, approaches him with the words, Love you. She's gotta be saying, I still you, right? She's gotta be saying, I love you. So this is a situation where, instead of him regressing and dying, Subaru sometimes can just access the ethereal realm. He's knocked out unconscious. When he's unconscious, he can also get to the ethereal realm. Satala says that shit. Okay. I mean, we know that Satala loves Subaru. Episode 12. Al's origin from another world. Here we go. Here we go. From another world. Another world. Isekai character after boarding priscilla's carriage and some talk about priscilla's status as a royal candidate and as the pinnacle of arrogance al casually mentions that he had noticed subaru was from another world just from the use of the expression red string of fate red string of fate is a common expression used in japan maybe is al is Al from Japan? I don't know. He goes on to mention he had not heard of it for 18 years. That is the amount of time he has been in this parallel world. Al has been... I don't know if he's been reincarnated. Nothing has that's been said, right? We don't know if he's been summoned or reincarnated, but he's been in here for 18 years. He had no idea of why or how he was summoned. Here we go. Summoned. Kind of like, well... I still don't know if Subaru is summoned because in Tensira, there's a distinction between people that are actually summoned by a bunch of people trying to summon these, you know, humans or other worlders, or sometimes people just spontaneously just walk into the realm, you know? Like Hinata. So Al was summoned. 18 years has passed, remarking he's just been trying to stay alive. Stay alive! <laughs> so, is Al... So this is like if Subaru never tried to move forward, Al is content with just staying alive. He's just trying to survive. Furthermore, some detail. Yeah, and it's the ending song to stay alive. Furthermore, some details about the world is given. That there is a great waterfall bordering the world of ReZero, meaning that it is a flat. <laughs> Wait. 
Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Flat earthers rejoice. Flat earthers fucking rejoice right now, bro. Rezero is a flower. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's interesting. So Al is an isekai character, 18 years, and all he's been trying to do is survive. He has not been making insane moves, and he doesn't know why he was summoned. But, you know, the Great Waterfall, the more south you go. So people are also saying the Great Waterfall is basically the borders, right? It's not just like the south. Like, basically, all the edges of the world is a Great Waterfall. What happens when you go down the waterfall? Think about that, right? What happens if you go down the waterfall? Y you... Well, the Great Dragon. The Great Dragon is beyond the waterfall, right? The lore-wise, Beak was said the Great Dragon resides beyond the waterfall. So, like... Is it really a flat worth? I mean... No one has gone past the waterfall. Right? We gotta go there, bro. We, we gotta fucking go there. But well, how does this work? Let, let's, let's say it's a plane of existence, right? You go down to the waterfall. Do you then come back up? Like, do you go down? Do you gonna come back up? It's like a portal? Or if you just go down, it's just continuously down. And you don't come from the, you know, in video games, you know, you, you go this way. Then sometimes you might come out this way, right? <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, but it's a flat worth. Waterfalls. Borders. Edges. All right. Next up. All possesses no episodic memories. What the fuck are you s What? No episodic memory? There is one more detail that Al mentions and was cut from the light novel in that he does not have any episodic memories. What the fuck does that mean? There are multiple types of memory. Episodic. Episodic memories are what most people think of as a memory that includes information about recent or past events or experiences. So he literally has dementia? Such as where you parked your car this morning. He has dementia. He straight up doesn't remember shit. Like, short form memory loss? What the fuck? Why? In that he is aware of stuff like common sense, concepts, names, slang. But he has no stories of himself. He doesn't know who he is or what he did. Huh. That's crazy, right? That's like, why? This guy has no memories of his identity or self. But he knows that he was summoned here. He knows that he was summoned here. Beyond that, he's just trying to stay alive. And when did the memory loss start to happen? Is this Priscilla's behaviors? Is Priscilla doing this, this to him? Does he even know how he had a disfigured face? I don't know. The, does not have any episodic memories. Like he's aware of the culture here, concepts, names, and slang, but regarding himself, he doesn't know. What if he's like a super important hero in the past and like now he's just fucking memory loss and he has no idea who he is? I don't know, but this is crazy. Packed? Perhaps. Right? We know that now Echidna's pact made Subaru forget that shit. Assuming that the pre-existing pact with Satala for Subaru means that Subaru also doesn't know Satala and that explains why Satala loves him so much but he doesn't know who she is. I don't know, but this is insane. The Black Serpent, here we go. The Black Serpent has been active in recent years. It is mentioned that there has been an onslaught undertaken by the Black Serpent in recent years. Well, Frozen Bond, I'm not sure if that's recent years, but we do see the Black Serpent there, right? The role of Shrine Maiden and Ruler has been joined into one. Hmm? There is a short exchange between Subaru and Reinhardt on how royal elections will do things differently from previous. Well, originally the Covenant, I still don't know what a Covenant really is, between the Dragon and the Ruler was originally mediated by a Dragon Maiden. The aim now is to have the ruler and dragon maiden rolled into one role. Uh, so no mediator. We don't we so instead of having a separate dragon maiden role, we just have one ruler, right? It's gonna be Amelia, Priscilla, Felt, Anastasia, whatever, Krush. 
and they make a covenant with the dragon. So what does a covenant even honestly mean? Just not re-zero terms, but just like covenant, right? An agreement. But yeah, it's like a pact vow oath. What's an agreement? It's like a deal, like you're expecting something back. I don't fucking know. Episode 13. Felt to suspect... Eyes. Eyes. Gouged out eyes. In the royal castle. After the initial commotion over Felt's background. Never mind. What am I talking about? That's Petra. What the fuck am I talking about? That's Petra. What are you... No, 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 no. This is Felt. This is Felt. This is Felt. In the royal castle, after the initial commotion over Felt's background, Reinhardt draws attention to Felt's physical characteristics, namely her blonde hair and crimson eyes, which were the trademark of the deceased royal family of Lugunica. And in fact, there was a princess who was supposedly kidnapped as a baby. Oh my god, it's her. Oh my god, it's her. 14 years prior to Arc 3 and how old is Felt? She turned 15 or some shit, right? Numbers make sense. It also makes sense how she is a selected, like an important person being a chosen one, right? And Felt also has no family name, exactly, right? Reinhardt asked for the name and the age, exactly. Everything is lining up. And Romji? This is the craziest theory of all. Romji was actually an ancient giant who was part of the royal family security, felt head made. Bro. Bro! No, 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 no. Because the reason I say this... The, the, no, 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 no. Hear, hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. This is official art. This is official art. Yes, it's a meme. Rem, Rom, Ram. I get it. It's funny. But, what if there's more meaning to this? What if Romji was literally Felt's attendant and took her to save her from the plague that destroyed all the royal family? Hmm. <laughs> the Romji thing? <laughs> I don't know, bro. <laughs> this is fun, though. This is fun, though. Reinhardt draws attention to Felt's physical characteristics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A princess, yep. Timing matches up. That's crazy. Al fled another country, the Volokhin Empire, and his face is disfigured. Remember, what is the Volokhin Empire? It's the Southern Continent, right? Where they found a meteor of another witch that wasn't Satala, and her witch clout began to go up. And then the cult sent an archbishop to destroy Valakia, right? Some extra background on Al is given. His past is one of having fled the Valakian Empire. Do you think that Al faced off against an archbishop and that's why his face is like that? Like the injuries are from when he was like fleeing the empire versus the archbishop? Because I don't know the timeline of when that should happen, right? But I don't know. Having been a sword slave for over 10 years, a dark secret of the Empire. What's a sword slave? That doesn't sound good. Meaning that he had partook in quite some battles. It is implied that was how he lost his arm. He lost his arm? Wait. Wait, wait. Do we... Have we seen him's other arm? He has no... What the fuck? I never noticed. No. I never noticed. Because he usually has a poncho to hide his over body. Like, if you look at the anime. Let's check this out. What episode is does Al show up often? Let me bring this up. I'm gonna time you out because like, you're getting a bit cocky. Episode 12 and 13. It's the poncho, bro. The poncho, he has no arm. Holy shit. Holy shit. It's just... 
because of this poncho, you don't really... Because, like, if it wasn't there, it'd be way more apparent. They hid that shit well. Holy fuck. Plus, I was too busy looking at Priscilla's titties. I was too busy looking at Priscilla's titties. Holy shit. What the fuck? He has no... Look! It's in front of... What the fuck? Okay! Ooh. Oh my god! <laughs> what the fuck? What is going on, bro? <laughs> okay. It is implied that was how he lost his arm. He also reveals a smart part of his lower face, which is described as being blanketed with old scars from burns, cuts, and other sources. Yes, I did take notice of Al's neck. Right? His neck? I thought that he was some sort of, like, dragon fucking hybrid because of how, like, ring-like his neck was, but... It's described as being blanketed with old scars from burns, cuts, and other sources. Priscilla, too, reveals his origins as being from beyond the Great Waterfall in public... Which does not get much attention. Whoa, 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 Beyond the Great Waterfall? So when he got summoned, he was at the Great Waterfall first? And then Priscilla found him? How? How the fuck would Priscilla... I... What? Because he was summoned. His origins. Well, I think... Yeah, yeah, I think this is more of like Isekai characters, right? Beyond the waterfall, as in like beyond this world and other world, right? Yeah, I, I think that's what, not in a literal sense, but yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think that makes more sense, right? Outside the world, got it, got it, got it. Next, Puck shows himself in the royal castle. All right, let's see this one. The part with the Canada speeches leading up to Subaru's freakout is very different. The candidates have lengthier speeches, lending them a bit more in depth and characterization. But the important part is when Amelia assumes the forefront. After she is denounced as a silver-haired ha half-devil, Roswell goes with the flow and publicly takes a massive dump on <laughs> Oh damn, no, Roswell, what are you doing? She takes a dump on her by saying that it doesn't matter if she's suitable for a candidate or not. They just needed five people. Listen, we're trying to drop in. We need a party of five. Is there anyone that uh, want to join us? It doesn't matter. Oh, you want to join us? All right, let's, let's, let's go. Literally a queue. This is literally a party quest. A queue. They're just fucking waiting. We need one more player. Anyone? Show up. I don't care who it is. Amelia? I don't vote. Let's go. Let's fucking go. Jesus Christ. Subaru is triggered by this. And after he doesn't stand out, stand down, Roswell launches an Algoa at him in the castle? What the fuck? What? However, Puck protects him and threatens everyone in the room with his ice magic. Why didn't they do this? Why did they not show this in the anime? This is an insane thing. It, it would have been so fucking hype, bro. The great spirit Puck showing out to protect Subaru against fucking the greatest magician in the continent and threatening everyone that he'll kill them. What the fuck? Why, bro? Why? However, Puck protects him and threatens everyone in the room with his ice magic, at which he's recognized as the Beast of the End. We've heard this term, right? Beast of the End. Frozen Bond, right? About how Puck's... Honestly, I understand a lot more after Frozen Bond, after how Amelia and the way that the world views Amelia. Like, fuck the world, right? Apocalypse Beast of Eternal Frost. Miktolov then realizes that it was all a sham planned by Roswell and Puck to show that albeit Amelia holds the power to kill everyone in the room. Oh. They're flexing. Roswell and Puck, they're simply flexing their powers just to let these motherfuckers know like, hey, even if Amelia's like that, like, listen, like, we have the capability. Acting as a tyrant, they make her out to be for to being a half-elf. She is not such a thing, and that she wishes to compete fair and square. Okay, okay, Roswell, I see you. Okay, okay, okay. 
Yeah, Roswell's smiling. I, I, again, I, I think the smiling part... No, the smiling doesn't explain it. It doesn't. Roswell specifically smiled at Subaru because he was fucking up, and he was content with Subaru fucking up. This passage is more of... Subaru was never... Like, Subaru got triggered by... Well... You know what? No, the smile, I think, is a shortened, condensed form. I think so. Because Subaru got triggered by Roswell's off comment. And due to that, the Puck versus Roswell could have been shown to the public. This is all according to their plans. But in the anime, obviously, they never showed that. So they made it concise and just made Subaru fuck up and Roswell smile. I, I think that is reasonable. I think it is. Episode 15. Rem holds some mixed feelings about the other residents. Okay, how much of this is left? Hold up. We're only on 20 minutes in. 15, 16, 17, 18. Oh my god. Yeah. Alright, you know what? We're going to end it here for now. We're going to do multiple parts of this. We're at episode 15. This is a decent place to start. Holy fuck, dude. The crazy shit, I think, is Al's past. Episodic memories being gone. Otherworlders summoning. Right? That's fucking insane. This plot is really cool, but felt being like, you know, royal family and, you know, Ramji. <laughs> Listen, I like my meme theories. I don't care if they're stupid. I will not let go of Teresia taking back shots from a beast man, okay? I don't, okay? I'm gonna keep the Ramji secret fucking royal <laughs> butler maid theory going, bro. <laughs> what else is there? Uh, Black Serpent. Owl, owl stuff is fucking crazy, right? Mm. The Ethereal Realm? I, I guess it's... So, I guess we can kind of know that, like, all the Satala shit of her whispering Subaru's ears, I think it's all, I love you, right? Love you, love you. And that's pretty much it. We're going to continue doing this cut content. I think this is essential to my knowledge for ReZero so that I can have more in-depth theory crafting and be more schizo during Season 2 reactions. But that's it. Goodbye.